All right, everybody. Well, welcome again. Thank you guys for attending this online webinar on Sitting for Success. Um, again, my name is Alexis. I am a physical therapist here at John Getz Physical Therapy. Um, if you have any questions in regards to Zoom, um, let's go over that real quickly. Just making sure that you are muted and that you're welcome to have your videos on or you can turn your videos off. It does not matter to me. Um, I will be sharing my screen throughout this function. So if you have any questions, just give me a chat and I'll be able to pop it up. We will reserve time at the end for questions. So if anything comes up that you have a question immediately, just go ahead and send it to me in the chat or you're welcome to save it for later. Um, there is a mute button and a stop video on the bottom part of your screen. So you are welcome to use those functions once we open it up for questions. Um, at the end, I will have my email and our contact information should you like to reach out to us any further, but we'll be able to get through all of those details as we approach. Um, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and begin. So again, welcome. This webinar is on sitting for success. I'm here to provide you with optimal ways to combat your day-to-day -day sitting habits and help maybe break some of those and give you some different tips and tricks that you maybe have not heard of before. Uh, my name is Alexis. I am a doctor of physical therapy, a little bit about myself. Um, I received my bachelor's in kinesiology from the University of North Carolina, Greensboro, and I received my doctorate in physical therapy from the University of St. Augustine. And I have been practicing here at John Getz Physical Therapy at the beach for about six, seven months now, and I absolutely love what I do. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. We will get started. So this month, and next month into June, we are running our Refer a Friend promotion. So if you are here that a friend has sent you to come and listen to me talk, or if you have received a link for those watching the replay, if you have signed up and a friend sent this to you, please send me an email saying the name of who referred you and how you heard about us. And you will be, your friend will also be entered to win a spa day. This also goes for our in-person referral. So if you have a friend, that is experiencing any aches or pains or is just looking for a little bit of a tune-up, you can get, have them contact us. Again, my contact will be at the end of this presentation. You can give them a contact and then you will be entered as well for a spa day at the Ponte Vedra Inn and Spa. So we'll continue going there. All right, so getting into it, did you know that 80% of the population has experienced an episode of low back pain in their life? I didn't know that it was that high, but I had figured it would be a pretty high number. And that low back pain is more common in females and those between 40 to 69 years, especially as you age, that incidence is getting a little bit higher, okay? We want to combat sedentary behavior. So there you coming to find out that sitting is a new smoking, that is a big slogan that people like to use. So sedentary behavior is defined as an activity with low energy expenditure performed in resting position. And now people think that sitting is just sitting at a desk, you're on the computer, you're not really doing anything, but this can also be in riding in a car, you're sitting for mealtimes, playing video games, just watching TV and sitting at the computer like we probably are all doing right now. So those are common behaviors that don't require a lot of energy that we spend in this prolonged position for long periods of time because we are comfortable, we're doing a task that we like to do. So just a little bit more into statistics. So I'm really big with statistics. Um, so sitting is linked to an increased risk factor for obesity, type two, diabe type two diabetes, coronary artery disease, different types of cancers, and overall, body musculoskeletal pain. And these things are correlated because we are not moving, we are not actively engaging our metabolic system, our cardiorespiratory system, and even our muscles, our bones and joints. So that inactivity is responsible for approximately 9% of premature mortality and 3.2% of 3.2 million people worldwide. I'm sorry about that. Um, so this is why we are trying to get more active, increasing our activities overall, so we can reduce these type of comorbidities and eventually preventative types of comorbidities as well, and just making sure that we move. So people who spend almost all their time working in a sitting position have a 1.4 time greater chance of premature death after 12 years. So 
sitting again is not going to be good for us in the long term. And for every two hours of sitting, you increase your risk of obesity and diabetes, which those two are highly, highly linked together by almost five to seven percent. And also it impacts the musculoskeletal system. So our muscles, our bones, our joints, everything and how they are supposed to be functioning and how they stay healthy. So again, that big slogan, sitting is the new smoking. We want to make sure we are active and giving our bodies that time to move and adapt and stay strong and resilient because you're only given one body in this lifetime and we got to take care of it. A little bit more about posture and how it impacts the musculoskeletal system because your physical therapists are the musculoskeletal experts. So sitting in that slumped position, you're weakening all of those core muscles into the front of your body and you are lengthening all of those muscles in and along the low back, which definitely creates just a little bit of a muscle imbalance and a little bit of posture abnormalities that we will eventually talk about later. In the discs that are between your spinal vertebrae, because they are not moving and lubricating the way they need to during activity, you're decreasing the water level supply, which those discs get more thin and it starts increasing that compression in through the low back and in through the spine. And again, obesity can be correlated to low back pain as well because of extra weight putting compression on, but we can eventually combat that and in moving into different positions and just retraining the body as well. Four postural adaptations and compensatory patterning during sitting, as you see by my little stick figure here on the slide, all of those poor positions can lead to just increased stresses along the muscles and the joints where the muscles and joints are not designed to take those loads. So... Again, back pain is, a, is more than just sitting for long periods of time. There are many, many factors that play into it. And the sedentary lifestyle is only part of the whole picture. This is the best part of why physical therapy is so important in combating any of your pains, your neck pain, your back pain, especially as we are in the sedentary lifestyle. So we have more things like sitting at your desk, we have things like external stresses in regards to work, your weight, your lifestyle, your diet, exercise, things that you do, what other aches and pains that you have beyond just sitting for long periods of time. We are all here sitting at desk jobs, especially after the COVID years have hit us and we're noticing an increase in back pain. We're noticing an increase in sitting but it's beyond just that sedentary lifestyle of sitting tasks that play into musculoskeletal and low back pain. So the big reason as to why you're all here, you don't want me to throw all these statistics at you. We are here to give you some tips and tricks to help you beat the slump and that poor sitting posture throughout the day. So I have asked all my wonderful coworkers here at John Getz Physical Therapy to provide their favorite tips and tricks and exercises to where we can help you, at least temporarily, kind of beat the slump and into those bad postures, okay? So Mark is our wonderful physical therapist assistant and his biggest um, suggestion is to adjust your workspace. So making sure that the chair height is appropriate for you, making sure that your monitor is at eye level, making sure that you allow for that natural curve in your spine, and you're not hunched over, you're not slouching down, but you want to design your workspace to where it works for you because everybody's going to be different. Everybody has different needs in their jobs and their activities during the day. So a little bit more about those tips and tricks for allowing of that natural curvature of the spine. You want to make sure your ears are rested over top of your shoulders so that head's going to be back just a little bit. Your shoulders are going to be nice and relaxed, not shrugged up by your ears. We don't like to wear our shoulders as earrings. Um, your arms are going to be supported in either the armrests of the chair or on the desk. You can use a pillow if you need to bring that up to you. Your pelvis is going to be neutral, so you're not going to be slouching down into that low back. We call it sacral sitting to where you're sitting more back on your tailbone, and we're not going to be having that nice high arch either to where you're putting stress on that low back either. Find a nice neutral position, and you should be sitting just right on the front of those sit bones, ideally, is where you would want to be. And those knees are going to be below your hip height. You don't want to be eating your knees. You don't want those knees in your chest at all. And finding that correct chair height is going to be also important for helping keeping that alignment too. So feet firmly on the ground about hip width apart. Keep your knees level with or just below the hips. And then your back is supported. You're not leaning into it. That's just there to provide 
is a little bit of extra support. Raise your computer up to eye level. So you tall people out there like myself, get something to stack it up. I actually have mine on two reams of paper right now to where I can keep it eye level and I'm not slouched over during the day. Sit to stand desks and movable workstations are also great. It's forcing you to get up and be active and putting more gravity in through the body and loading those structures. And it gets you out of that sitting position to do more dynamic activities while you still have to work. So getting active workstations, those are becoming more and more popular. The, the portable treadmills, the stepper machines, the under desk cycles, those are also gonna be ways if you have a highly, highly sedentary job and don't have time to move the day because you have so many tasks you need to do on a computer, get something that you're gonna help move. Just be a little bit active where you can. Um, now myself, my favorite tip to tell people is to set a timer. Don't sit for too long. The more you get up and move, the better you will feel and the better your body will respond. So I like Pomodoro timers. They break off tasks and schedule your task time and then schedule your break time. So, and you're making sure that you're getting up and moving because a prolonged posture is going to be a bad posture. You don't wanna be in it for too long. So motion is lotion, movement is medicine. And that is the nature of what we do as physical therapists is we are here to educate you how to move better and make everything more beneficial. So in any way that you can, I like these apps that are listed here. You can get them on any smartphone. Um, and what it'll do is you set a block of time. So at 25 minutes, you will work and focus on your task for 25 minutes. You will have a five minute timer go off after that. You take that mandatory break for five minutes. You do not do work, you get up, move, you stretch, do whatever you can. If you don't wanna download an app, I tell people to set their move reminders on their smartwatches. You can also just set a regular timer and get up, stretch after about an hour, 30 minutes or an hour. But the more you move, the better it's going to be for your joints and your bones and your back pain and getting up and stretching. Dalton is another one wonderful physical therapist assistant that we have here. His favorite tip is to sit tall and breathe deep. So you want to make sure you're sitting upright. Again, like Mark said earlier, those ears are going to be back over your shoulders to be nice and relaxed. But making sure your sternum or your chest bone is perpendicular to the ground. You don't want it to be leaning more forward where you're arching your back and you don't want to be hunched over at your shoulders. So make sure that sternum is just nice and vertically in your body. So the shoulder blades down and back and it allows your rib cage to naturally expand and depress as you take those deep breaths to where you're allowing for that optimal oxygenation um, and which helps even the brain flow of the day too. So another good one you can do to help stretch out the shoulders and the ribs and just the overall chest expansion is a big doorway stretch. So you see here, you'll just place your arms in the door frame, give a gentle lean forward, shifting your weight and feeling a nice comfortable stretch across the front of your chest here and just relaxing into it. It should be strong and comfortable and it should not be painful when you do this. The other one to help those shoulders relax are called scapular clocks. You sit in the chair, you start shrugging your shoulders up to 12, then you shrug them back 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6, eventually shoving those shoulder blades down into your pockets to help relax the shoulders and decrease that tension of all the neck muscles up here that we can gain tension in throughout the day. Reagan, our wonderful clinic manager and physical therapist assistant, her favorite tip to give is an exercise we do called pivot prone. It allows for full body vertical alignment, assists with activation of different stabilizing muscles that are really small that, can't, that are supposed to work harder longer. And it limits those asymmetrical compensations that we can move in during sitting for long periods of time and that we can just kind of get stuck into, into the slump of the day. So she likes to tell people to do this exercise to improve their postural patterning and just keep an overall healthy spine. So what this will look like is you're starting with your back up against the wall. You wanna make sure first your low back and your head are up against the wall. You will eventually place your elbows on the wall, sliding them up shoulders just to about a little bit less than 90 degrees. So elbows just lower than shoulder height right about here. You'll bring your wrist back and try to touch those pinkies to the wall. You might feel it in your shoulder. Some of you might not even be able to get into this position to start off and that's totally fine. The first time I did this, I was very terrible at it and my shoulders would not even go that high. But the more I've practiced and even the more our patients have practiced this, the easier it gets and the better everybody feels. 
You'll start your way holding this position for 30 seconds, eventually working your way up to two minutes. But if 30 seconds is too long, start with what you have and ease your way into it. Zach is another wonderful physical therapist that we have. He also received his doctorate in physical therapy from the University of St. Augustine. And his favorite tip to give people is to do pelvic tilts while they're sitting in their chair. So his big thing is just making sure that you're paying attention to how you're sitting throughout the day and not allowing yourself to be in that prolonged position for too long. You wanna keep your spine moving, healthy, agile, and making sure that it is still moving throughout the day so you keep those discs nice and healthy. So that way you're not increasing that back pain as you sit. So pelvic tilts um, look also like a pelvic clock. So in a typical just pelvic tilt in the picture here, you will just rock your hips from 12 to six. As you get really good with that throughout the day, you can try to move them eventually into the circle just like we did with our shoulder blades. So you'll move from forward over into one o'clock, shifting your weight onto one side, back into until you're sitting back onto six o'clock where your weight is equal. Then you'll shift a little bit to the left for seven, eight, nine, up and forward for 10, 11, 12. If the clock is too challenging for you, you can start with just a gentle forward, backward pelvic tilt from 12 to six, making sure you're getting that full range. Again, it should be pain-free, it should be comfortable. And this is another good way that you can find that comfortable sitting position and finding that neutral spine as well. It should feel natural for you to sit in this position and shouldn't feel too strenuous. So that is all I have for you guys today. And I wanna thank you guys for attending. Um, this is our contact information for our clinic. Again, if a friend has sent you, go ahead, send me an email. Let me know your name, your best contact information, and the friend that sent you so they can be entered in our refer a friend drawing. If you are attending from either a, the chamber meeting or if somebody has sent you the Zoom link individually, send me an email with your name and contact information. Even as we do the recording, you guys, that is still super important and still counts with refer a friend as well. So even if you send your friend the Zoom link, go ahead and send me an email. Um, so right now I will open this to questions. You're welcome to either chat it to me or you're welcome to unmute and ask me questions. I'll be able to help you out as best as I can. Um, and our contact information for the clinic is also listed below. And we do offer free virtual discovery visits that we can help with your back pain, neck pain, and letting you know if physical therapy is, a, is the right move for you. So you can always give us a call there or send me an email and I can help you out. So if you have any questions right now, the floor is open. All right, so Brenda just asked about leg stretches for sitting. Um, we can do a different, we can do different stretches in sitting. So one I like to do is a hamstring stretch for the back of the legs. You'll just scoot a little bit forward into your chair, placing the heel on the ground in front of you of, of one leg. You'll keep that spine in neutral, reaching down toward your toes so you can feel the stretch in the back of the leg. And each time you do stretching, you would like to hold it for longer durations and short number of times to allow those muscles to really lengthen and adapt with the receptors in all of our muscles. So a good stretch for that, um, like I said, hamstring stretches are always pretty good. When it comes to activity, I tell people to just start doing calf raises and then small kicks just to keep, keep the muscles moving. You can even march while you're sitting in the chair as well, keeping that core nice and tight as well that helps keep you active in some of that sitting position too. Um, but the best way to get specific stretches for your body is definitely coming in and come and see us and that way we can, we can help you out making it specific for you.
and I'll leave it open for a few more minutes just in case anybody has any questions. All right, well, if anybody does think of any questions that pop up after watching this video or attending, you're welcome, send me an email. I'll be happy to help you as best as I can. And if you are interested, give our clinic a call and let's get you scheduled for a discovery visit and helping all of your aches and pains beyond just neck pain and back pain. We treat everything head to toe and it doesn't have to be injury related. It doesn't have to be pain related. If you just want something checked out, come and see us, give us a call. We'll be able to help you out as best as we can because your physical therapists are going to be your movement and your musculoskeletal experts. So what better ways to take care of anything in your body than coming to see us? Again, give us a call, email me any questions. I thank you guys again for your attendance and we look forward to seeing you guys soon.